Well, hello. Welcome once again to Pale Blooms and Beyond. Thank you. Nice to be with you. Today. Nice to be with you. Thank you, Ronnie. Ronnie King is a Canadian musician most known as a bassist in the 70s rock band Stampeders. If you grew up in the 70s, you'll surely remember their big hit, Sweet City Woman, from 1971. The roots of the Stampeders go back to 1964 in Calgary, Alberta, as the rebound, a five piece. After going through a few lineup changes, Ronnie joined the band in 1965. The band then relocated to Toronto in 66, scaling down to a trio, Ronnie on bass, Kim Burley on drums, and Rich Dodson on guitar and vocals. This mm -hmm. would be the longest running lineup of the band. Mm -hmm. The Stampeders' heyday was the 70s, and before the band split up in 1979, they had recorded nine albums, toured Canada and the U.S. extensively, as well as Europe and South America. But that wasn't the end of the story. The trio reunited in 1992 and released an album, Sure Beats Working. I like that title, in 1998. And the Stampeders, still playing and touring. Well, welcome, yes. Ronnie. Or should I say Cornelius Von Sprung? You could if you <laughs> got my first name right. Okay. It's okay. C O R E N E L I S. No, you and anybody oh. that puts one in there, anyway, look they're going to get it. Okay. Well, you, no. you, you better. It's Cornelius. Cornelius. Okay. You better. You better give me a a nice shot then. Cor Cornelius. <laughs> Cornelius van Sprang. Okay. Explain. Explain the name. I was born in Holland, in Rotterdam, Netherlands, and okay. uh, came to Canada similar to Van Halen. Uh, at seven years old, I think Eddie Van Halen was eight years old, except we're about 10 years uh, difference. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, so I uh, and my two older brothers and our mom and dad and an aunt and uncle and their three kids uh, all came over on the boat from Rotterdam to Halifax. And uh, we took the train from Halifax all the way to Calgary, Alberta. So... Yeah. Uh, Right. Do you, do you remember how, how long the trip was? Oh, yeah. We definitely, <laughs> the Grote Beer, oh, that's a Dutch word for big bear, uh, oh. ship was named, named this. Uh, it took about, uh, I'd say, six, seven days or so. And uh, yeah, seasick. Yes, I did. And, uh, <laughs> and then on to the train to go to... Uh, Halifax, I mean, uh, Calgary. Uh, I, I, I've been back there since, you know, and uh, you kind of, I kind of walk into the, uh, it's now a museum where we landed. It's called Pier 21. And uh, they were quite thrilled at the fact that I was, I had notoriety in Canada, the Stampeders, etc. And they, yeah. and I said, and I'm, I'm working on a book and so on else. Oh, would you please want to release it from here? And I said, well, it's a thought, it's a thought. But anyway, yeah, so so I went back there, and they were quite thrilled uh, about about the fact that I had done this trip because they were telling everybody else, all the other people. <laughs> right. They say no, and then this is how with his where they embarked, disembarked, and then they come over here, and they said, "Yeah, that's <laughs> it was not easy to come off and try to grab your sea legs." And oh, oh. did you do this trip? Yes, I did. <laughs> No, yeah, exactly. To get the so, yeah, right, you know, get get yeah. stabilized, stabilized. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, they could have a yeah, they could have a whole tour and and charge for it. You know? Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, one thing led to another. Uh, of uh, you know, I mean, arriving in Calgary with the we already had an aunt and uncle uh, who lived here previously. So you you. The European tradition is you move in with them for a couple of months until you find your own place, etc. And uh, we did that, you know. And then uh, I couldn't speak a word of English; it was uh, all in Dutch. So I had to go to a, a school, you know. And uh, <laughs> grade three, I think I, I entered the elementary system here, and uh, I I didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't even know how to say uh, things and so on else. So I was trying to 
trying to tell this teacher that I needed to go to the washroom. And she said, oh, what are you doing? And I said, well, me, me have to go. Pss, pss. <laughs> and she got, she got it. <laughs> you know, I've heard stories of that, you know, trying to translate people yeah. who went to different countries saying, I need to go to the restroom. And I forget <laughs> which country this was. They, they led him to a, a room where you could rest. You know, yeah. sit back. <laughs> you know, not use the bathroom. You know, yeah. not the toilet, but just a, re a resting room. So, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> interesting about the different languages. Mm. Well, we'll talk yes. about your uh, fond, you know, your memories of your childhood there uh, in Calgary. Well, yeah, in Calgary, definitely uh, did my school years there. Uh, got in, got into a lot of trouble in uh, my high school, which is just a block and a half over here from, really? from where I live now. Yeah, and you can uh, see it. You can see it. Yes. Okay. Yes, I moved back to Calgary. So Rich still lives in Toronto. Kim lives in Vernon, BC. And when we get together, it's uh, okay. I'll meet you at the airport, and we'll rent uh, minivans as usual, and uh, take uh, four guitars and drumsticks. And then some merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> so we did that. But uh, yeah, take you back to uh, the early years was uh, we I had gotten a guitar from uh, my father. My father was a barber and he came to uh, uh, I was I was just laying in bed one time at about, I don't know, 12 years old or so. And uh, all of a sudden I. I hear, bang, ding, 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 ding. and I look up and my father's standing in his underwear playing <laughs> his guitar. So, no, where did you get that? Well, from my boss, it was a, it's a used acoustic. And uh, if you can, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> if you want to try it out, you can. And I said, well, then, <laughs> for sure. And I wouldn't put it down. I couldn't put it down. And so... I learned as best I could. I got together with a buddy of mine that lived a, a district over from Calgary here. I live in somewhere called Boness. That's where I live. Boness. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I have heard of that. Yeah. I don't remember it there, but I know I've heard of Boness. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, and uh, now I'm back here. Same thing. And I used to go to Montgomery, just one district over and uh, learn all we could uh, from on the guitar mostly ventures the ventures but we yeah. walk don't run look out we oh, could yeah. do it backwards <laughs> we started, you know and we we went to see the ventures and and other uh, instrumental bands mostly that uh, that were prevalent in the day and uh, and so we, we we kind of didn't even think about singing yeah. and and uh, you know, walk don't run. <laughs> we had that down. Yeah. But event eventually, when the you know when singers started to definitely come to the fore, uh, be it uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, Fats Domino, and Chuck Berry, and all those guys, uh, you definitely thought, hey, we should try singing. <laughs> right. You know. <laughs> wow. There's a concept. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so we uh, we tried singing, and uh, it, some of it worked out. So, Would you, uh, do you remember? Uh, do you remember uh, one of the first like forty fives or singles or albums that you got? Do you remember? Well, well, yeah. Again, it was instrumental. I think uh, okay. "Walk Don't Run" was the, probably the first single, wow. okay. and then the album with all the ventures instrumentals on there, Perfidia and Hawaii Five O, I believe. I'm not sure if it existed at that time, but uh, the ventures they had all those songs. So we were they were our idols. And eventually we went on. Uh I was playing in Calgary uh I don't know, ten years ago or so. And uh somebody said, you want to come down and check out Noki Edwards? who's uh, one of the ventures and uh, he's playing as a solo artist with a band uh, in his little small bistro and what have you. I said, yeah, I'd love to. And someone else. And so then long story short, they said, Hey, Ronnie King's here. Do you, you want to get up? I said, sure. You know, so I get up 
And I did. I got my mojo working. My my <laughs> version. My version. And I told I uh, encouraged uh, Noki to do a lead solo as I played bass. And this guy was just over the top, just doing Holy man, take another one, take another one. <laughs> so yeah, so eventually he said uh, his his wife managed him. Said, hey, "Would you, would you guys like to come down to Eugene, Oregon, and uh, and uh, be part of our song festival, our, our guitar festival? You know, we got everybody coming from uh, Willie Nelson's guitar player to, uh, <laughs> and they rattled off all these great guitar players, and and yeah. uh, I wasn't even playing guitar really, but." Uh, <laughs> you know, I notified the other guys. I said, "Guess what? We some of our boyhood idols wants to, us to come and check out to playing in the in Eugene, Oregon." And uh, yeah. there was about see, there was about twenty other acts on the show, and so on. And we did, you know, we did our hits and yeah. "Sweet City Woman" and whatnot. And the they seemed that seemed to pacify them. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Can, can you remember uh, one of the first concerts? concerts that you attended well uh, <laughs> i hate to sound like a broken record but the, the venture <laughs> we were just <laughs> okay. nuts about the ventures you know yeah yeah and, and um so we would go and and you know check out their every every nuance we can, you know, that's how they play this and that's a chord and that's you know this is how they stand this is how they stand so we'll stand the same way <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've heard i've heard about i did an interview recently with a 60s group that said they had choreographed you know their moves you know you know how they yeah. step forward step back you know and do this kind of stuff they said they sure. were, it, it was always about that you know well what yes. about what about your uh the uh first band that you were that you were actually a part of very first band i was in was uh here in Calgary, mm -hmm. called the Echoes. Okay. Now it had it had the same manager. My my brother was good friends with uh, Mal Shaw, who was the Saturday afternoon uh, a coordinator for talent on yeah. television. Ah. So uh, so th th that show was called Guys and Dolls, and uh, it was like a Saturday afternoon sock hop. You know what I mean? So. Uh, Eventually, we got to be on there it's every Saturday and so on else. And as a result, we started filling halls, uh, you know, 300 people or so in a community hall. And uh, yeah, we got the Echoes here tonight. So we changed <laughs> changed our name. The manager changed our name to the Echo Tones. Uh, it's fine, fine, whatever. So we did that. And he said, well, I hope you guys are ready to travel because I'm going to take a uh, a band to uh, you know to all sorts of big time places, uh, uh, England and maybe you know, in the states, L.A. and on and on. So, well, yeah, we're ready. Well, eventually he got himself another band that got together, and uh, which uh, was the Rebounds, uh -huh. and, and they got the Rebounds together. And then he said, "I'm going to be, you know, traveling with you guys and so on. Let's see, see what to." See what we can come up with songwriting wise and all that. And, all right, well that's great. We're we're game. So <laughs> we did. We, yeah. We, yeah, I know. Well, do it. Was was uh, at that time uh, in Calgary. Was there any kind of music scene at all uh, going on? Yeah, you know, uh, but it was limited because uh, of the Lord's Day Act. There was a kind yeah. of a <laughs> a ministerial type of a premiere that we had and so on else. And I don't know if he liked rock and roll very much, <laughs> but we, <laughs> we, we played it. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, but eventually we, we kind of felt we had to go from Calgary to Toronto and uh, we bought ourselves a, a nine passenger limousine <laughs> with wow. seats, seats in the middle, you know, and yeah. six, six guys in the back <laughs> and our manager his wife in the front and two kids in the front seat so so we closed the the middle window because uh, most, some of us smoked you know yeah. and uh oh yeah put that bloody thing out you're not you know so 
Well, well, hang on. We'll just close the middle window and you should smell it. So, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah, we were a motley crew, I'll tell you. <laughs> a motley crew. Well, yeah. with everybody in the back, it's, 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 I wonder that the limousine didn't go like this, you know, like yeah. <laughs> and driving down the road. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, oh we've, had, we've had some uh, adventures in that limo, I'll tell you. Uh, I, I've had one or two in the back seat, but it's not something I want to talk about. Right. I got you. <laughs> what, what happens in uh, Las Vegas stays there. Yeah. We, yeah. yeah. What, what about, uh, so you joined the uh, Stampeders in, what, 65? Is that right? About 1965? Yes. Uh, there was a another rhythm guitar player, Len Romer, who wasn't uh, into traveling and all that to the, to the East, for starters. And because he was married and so on and said, no, I'm, I'm going to stay here. So I was kind of higher, having the same manager that we had previously from the Echo Tones, Echoes, all that. Uh, uh, I was taken on as a, as a uh, you know, a, an additional guitar player and uh, with a bass player. And my brother sang uh was it one of two stand-up lead singers, the, the drummer's brother, Race Holiday, and uh, all stage names, and my brother Van Lewis, because he liked Louis Armstrong. So, <laughs> so I mean, we were doing all of the hits of the day, and uh, someone else, and mostly let the uh, the stand-up lead singers take care of things. Righteous Brothers, I'm talking about no baby, not my baby, she's my baby, etc. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so and and each guy did their own uh, version of of songs. Uh, Race was pretty adept at uh, uh, Tom Jones and whatever. But my my brother Van could do Roy Orbison better than Roy. Is that right? Oh yeah. Oh, in me okay. as I walk with you. It's, he's up there, you know. I, I can't do it, but but I I can imitate it. <laughs> yeah. So, well, well uh, we, uh, why was the uh, the band uh, scaled down to just the trio? What, what was the well, it it had you know it, it at this point that I'm talking about, it was still a six piece band, and okay. so uh, eventually it started to kind of just whittle down to. Uh, um, I believe uh, Race was the first one to leave and then BJ, Brendan Little and uh, then my brother Van, we were a four piece for a little while and he said now nah, I think I'll go back to Calgary and, uh, okay. and you know so that's how we went down to three, a trio and someone else he said well Who's going to play bass? Well, come on, Ronnie, you can play bass. It's just the last four strings of a guitar. <laughs> yeah, but I want to show off a guitar. You know, I got some lead fills, etc. Same as my hairdo. You know? <laughs> <laughs> because because our manager Mal had it all figured out and said, okay, you're going to be uh, you're going to be the uh, the image, the whole image for Stampeders, etc. We're going to wear cowboy hats, matching and. Uh, matching denim outfits and boots and so on else and so <laughs> we get to toronto and we arrive at some booking agent or whatever else and we're maybe going to go upstairs and our manager says hats on what hats on we're not gonna bloody well you know we're gonna go go with this image and we're, okay <laughs> here we get six guys walk in with mickey mouse ears <laughs> cowboy hats on yeah <laughs> and there was nobody there was nobody really in that office just a, another artist I believe <laughs> anyway hey, who are you guys <laughs> <laughs> so they said okay well I'll tell you what we're going to take uh, take you down to the village uh, Yorkville in in Toronto and uh, let you see what you're up against and so on else so we were about to slated to play a club called the, the El Patio okay. and uh it uh, they definitely showed us the ropes. These these uh, our, our driver and so on. Here's where you're. And if this is a Zandabar, this is one of the better strip clubs in town. And this is such and such. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> took, a, took a few years. Yeah. 
Well, I wanted, to ask, years, you, but, yeah. well, I wanted to ask you about this. I didn't have it in my question, but I just thought of this. The the uh, football team, Calgary Stampeders, yeah. uh, did they get their name from you guys? Is that did uh -huh. they uh -huh. No, we'd, we'd probably <laughs> – <laughs> I need to have a drink for that one. Uh, we hated our name. Okay. We just did not like it. Our manager said, look, there's this guy that's going to invest 10 grand in uh, a band that will have something to do uh, with, the, with the Calgary image, you know, and so on, and uh, a band and so on else. And so we've come up with a name, and guess what it is? So our drummer, Kim, said, for if sakes, not the Stampeders, please. <laughs> and that <Yeah>. was it. <laughs> he said, well, what's wrong with that? And we said, well, Stampeder Football Club, for starters, Stampede City Motors, Stampede everything in Calgary tries to pick up on the, on the you know, the biggest tourist attraction, which is the Calgary Stampede. Yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. So, Yeah. Uh -huh. So anyway, we we did not like the name, but uh, our manager convinced us that uh, this was a good name to go with. Guess what? They don't know that in the states. They don't know that in Europe, in South America, all of it. You know, you they don't know from San Peter football team or nothing like that. Okay, well, if you say so, <laughs> away we go. So you didn't get any. Uh, there wasn't any flack from the football club right no no they've always kind of been proud to i think to, to, I guess to have you're, you're helping promote them yeah in a way well, yeah i was gonna say you know they'd be uh they'd be proud to 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 have hit records <laughs> yeah right right <laughs> i got a little a little side story for you do you know sure. that the rock dwayne what's johnson? his name johnson? Dwayne, dwayne johnson worked played for the stampede football club did he really? No, I didn't know. Yeah. That. Yes, okay. he did. Okay. okay. Wow. Well, wow. Yeah. look at him now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Wow. Dwayne Johnson. The Rock. Yeah. Well, um, Sweet City Woman, you know, yes. from 1971. I mean, that, uh, let me ask you first, did you guys feel after you recorded that and released it, that it had real hit potential? Did you feel like it was going to go somewhere? Yeah, that one definitely. Uh, Rich came in with about four or five songs that uh, he said, I'd like to record these and so on else, and I'll just show you guys, etc. So he came in with uh, Devil You, uh, Sweet City Woman, Wild Eyes, and one or two others. And Kim and I were, oh, that's not, boy, that Sweet City Woman certainly sounds like it's got potential. You know, it started out as and so on else because uh, we all just fell into place. Rich started playing the banjo. Well, uh -huh. actually, it was just initially on guitar. And uh, somebody said, I think our man our manager said, you know, uh, Sweet City Woman, when you do that on guitar, why don't you do it on a banjo? And uh, Rich, I think, said, no, I never thought of that. That might be a thought. So he went to the local music store and uh, to see whether we could rent a uh, appropriate uh, Gibson <laughs> banjo, right? And uh, so we took it for a week and whatever, and we worked with it and so on else. But now the salesman, who we knew quite well, He's telling everybody, well, oh, this is this is the banjo that, that played Sweet City Woman. Yeah, yeah. And the next person, yeah, this is the banjo that played Sweet City Woman. <laughs> he sold, I don't know how many banjos he sold, uh, <laughs> telling people wow. that it was the Sweet City Woman banjo, right? And we yeah. never knew where the real one went. <laughs> <laughs> where it really went. <laughs> oh, man. That's a that's a great that's a that's a great story and a great way to sell them too. Yeah. Exactly. Did you, uh, for me, you know, it's it's one of those iconic early '70s songs. It's uh -huh. you know they, they, they got played on AM radio. I I loved a whole lot of that AM radio stuff. Yeah. Um, thanks for noticing. So, so, so carefree and and again the banjo. Um, yeah. And then that that guitar solo too. You know, you know that's hey, just that's the hey, one. You want a, you want yeah, a job? 
<laughs> yeah, I tell people I was a mean air guitarist. I mean, okay. you know, yeah, <laughs> with my yeah, tennis, tennis racket, tennis racket, boy, I could just yeah. jam out. <laughs> yeah, right. But that's that's one, yeah, that really takes you back. And it again, it's just kind, of, it's just again, it's just uh, carefree, you know, and take you I back to the B side. I oh. wrote the B side, which is called Gator Road. And oh, they're kind of yeah. kind of a Tony Joe White thing, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and Ro and Rosalie Tremblay from CKLW in Windsor. Maybe you've uh, heard of her. Uh, I no, think she retired no. now. Whatever else. Rosalie Tr Tremblay picked my Gator Road over Sweet City Woman. <laughs> oh, to play that. Okay. But, but Sweet City Woman took off, uh, you know, <laughs> and all the rest of the stations. <laughs> Well, you know, that's one thing that was really, some DJs really helped by flipping it over, you know, and playing yeah. the beef side. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that was nice. And that's how those songs got, got heard, you know, a lot of times. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Song, of course, did real well. Uh, did you guys <clears throat> enjoy that? I mean, having that kind of success that at that time? Who wouldn't? I mean, let's face it. Uh, uh, <laughs> and we started having hits in Canada first. The first hit was in Canada was Carry Me. It okay. uh, was yeah. us kissing up to the States because yeah. uh, Carry Me, home to Birmingham, et cetera, about the Civil War, which Rich was quite enthralled with, et cetera. So, but then uh, uh, we, we told them in the record company in the States and whatever, but, uh, you know, uh, We've got uh, success in Canada already, and uh, called "Carry Me." And so, well, we thought uh, we, we thought you should maybe want to go with "Sweet City Woman." That seems to be your your winner. So, okay, whatever. <laughs> and so, excuse me. Yeah, sure. That's what uh, we ended up going with "Sweet City Woman." You know, and so quite quite uh, uh, astonishing. I mean, to to be touring in Southern Ontario even doing some high schools just at the tail end of our small them <laughs> yeah <laughs> before the big time right and uh we'd be we, w a b c <laughs> we'd get uh new york and the same one hey new band from canada dun, 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 dun. man yeah. we stopped the car we were i think we were going home late at night yeah. uh i don't know Two, one, two in the morning, and someone else. We stopped the car at the side of the road. We ran around like idiots, jumped on the car, etc. Not sure <laughs> if it was ours, <laughs> but uh, you know, other drivers going, "Look at those hippie idiots! You know, they're all probably stoned and everything." <laughs> we got to hit. <laughs> yeah, to hear your song on the radio, yeah, that must have been something. Yeah, like, well, sure. we'll talk, talk about. So then came the white man, and I told yeah. her, and I think she. Kathy told you that is my favorite, and I didn't know that you had written it anything before the interview. But that is that is my favorite, Dan Peterson. Thank you, thank yeah. you very much. I uh, don't know. I came from Holland as a little Dutch boy that uh, <laughs> tried to make sense of it all, and I definitely went to cowboy Indian movies. Cowboy, yeah, well, let's get those savages and so on. Else. And then started to uh, you know started to see the truth. And so on, and say, wait a minute, these indigenous people were just going to give stuff to you, you know. And so, uh, and there was one commercial that you might remember that uh, had this indigenous fella standing on the side of the road, kind of hitchhiking or whatever else, About and somebody trash. threw yeah, about, trash. Yeah, and he's got a tear. And he's got a tear yeah. running down. Yeah, I, man, that moved me. That moved yeah. me. So I said, yeah. I'm writing a song. <laughs> yeah. and, oh wow! It was it was uh, from that seeing that that you were motivated to to do definitely. That. Oh, yep. wow. Yeah, I do remember definitely. that. Yeah, I do remember that. Well, a couple other. I mean, from uh, Rubes, Dudes, and Rowdies. Oh my lady and Minstrel Gypsy. Great, both great tracks. Yeah, Kim, our drummer, was the yeah. balladeer more or less. Oh, okay. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, from the Potter album, Running Wild, great rocker. I like the guitar yeah. work on Running Wild. I rich. Like yeah. That's rich. That's rich. One thing, and I have to tell you this, about Canadian rock bands, what I like 
because you guys are really tight, tight units, and you know how to rock. You really mm -hmm. know how to rock. But all the, all the all the grooves and all the songs are just it's like Bachman Turner Overdrive, right. April Wine, Pat Travers, Frank Marino, Mahogany Rush, you know, all just just really tight, tight units. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You may rem you may remember the guess who. Yes. Uh-huh. Pre <laughs> pre BTO. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. where yeah, exactly. That's yeah. where Randy came from before he in yeah, the yeah. Backman Turner Overdrive, and we played many yeah. shows together, and so on. You know. Oh, did you? Okay. Oh, sure. We remember when they uh, we were playing the Ottawa Exhibition, and I had double billed or whatever it was. But uh, uh, the guess who we're going to get uh, a gold record for these eyes, yeah. these eyes long to hold you, and uh, so I remember them getting that record and I'm holding it up and so on else and I yep. think uh, I think we were on first and then the guess who yeah. but uh, yeah so <laughs> that's how oh. many shows we did together oh, American Woman and uh, what exactly. was the other one I really really like oh and then I like Burton Cummings uh, his uh, solo song uh, Stand Tall I remember yeah. that as well well me Jeez, and my stone come undone. yeah me and my stone oh yeah come undone me and my stone has a nice groove. That's Thank that's a, that's and then uh, and then of course Ramona, uh, great chugging bass and guitar. Uh -huh. um, yeah, yeah, really, really, really nice one to go back and listen to a, a lot. Um, I wrote me and me and my stone, and uh, it, it, it's very similar to the Beatles. We said let's not be. Uh, typecast like all the other bands or this or that or even you know like the Motown sound they pretty much if we learned later on had the same band playing all the tracks for any different man uh, for any different uh, you know artists and so on else be it Smokey Robinson or Gladys Knight and the Pips mm, bum, 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 you know, hey, same band same band wait a minute <laughs> right right <laughs> but we never I mean, knew that so on whatever a little bit later well, from Hit the Road, playing in the band, mm -hmm. I like I like the horns in that. Thanks. Um, it gives it that Latin that Latin feel, and I can almost hear like War, the band War, doing that. Ah, thank you, know? you for for that acknowledgement yeah. because uh, yeah. Billboard or whatever it was Cashbox uh, called it. Uh, yeah, it was kind of the Herb Alpert of rock. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. well, I no, I wouldn't I wouldn't go there. <laughs> no, no. But I could hear yeah. I could hear Wards covering that track. And then of Down course you hit the road jack. Uh mm -hmm. you know, I don't I heard it from a very uh, compilation, I remember. Whose idea was uh Wolfman Jack, the phone call? Mine because I uh, became friends with Wolfman quite uh, <laughs> we we played a song festival in uh in Cal, uh, no, in uh, Saratoga Springs, New York, uh -huh. South Toronto, and uh, so I uh, had occasion to uh, I'd be touring my my ass off and so <laughs> on. But I had a, a, a lady friend in uh, Toronto, and I said, "Hey, if you want to come down, we're we're in the same place for a week for a change, you know." So, uh, oh yeah, I'll do that. So. Uh, so she came to fly down. I drove the half hour from the hotel to the airport, etc. Right, and I'm waiting for her and so on. Else, and all of a sudden, I see Wolfman Jack walking out of the. You know, he had uh, his manager with him or whatever. So I couldn't. I can't help myself. I go and say, "Hey, man, nice to meet you. We're on the same show, etc." But his manager in, uh, intercepted me and he said, "Now, uh, how you doing?" and uh, Oh, your same show and whatnot, eh? And Wolfman's kind of standing behind with his rubbing his eyes, etc. And he says, uh, hey, what's happening? You know, <laughs> Donnie, his manager, says, Yeah, look, we're all on the same show. And uh, look, your friend Jose Feliciano is there, and uh, Ray Charles, and uh, the Letterman, and uh, on and on, the Eagles, <laughs> and the Stampeders, right? Uh, so uh, Wolfman says, yeah, who's this? <laughs> and his manager, his manager introduces us, and he says, this is Ronnie King of the Stampeders. How are you doing? And, uh, he, he, uh, Wolfman says, oh, hi, Stan. <laughs> no, 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 not Stan Peters. 
<laughs> These stampeders, you know. So, oh, sorry, Stan. And I said, if you want to get real, I said, my given name is Cornelius Van Sprang. You want to get uh -huh. real. But uh, stage name's Ronnie King, you know. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Cornelius, uh, whatever the hell your name is, you wouldn't have any shit, would you? <laughs> So I, I I tried to I tried to calm him down. I said, "Well, you came to the right guy. I probably was carrying some pot. I hope it's not illegal there and the, everywhere, <laughs> but it's not in Canada anymore. So there, anyways. So he was quite enthralled. I said, "Here, you take him." I was I only brought one or two to the airport, and uh -huh. uh, oh, really? You don't need more. I said, yeah, yeah, I got a whole ounce back at the hotel and we're all there together <laughs> for a week. No, oh, you're kidding. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> well, on the on the phone call, he says he says Cornelius, doesn't he? He, he does. He's the only one I let put the U in there. <laughs> let, him, let him do that, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll give you a pass since you're Wolfman. Okay. And I made the and I made the mistake once of introducing him by his real name. Oh, okay. All right. Did he like it's... he didn't like what? what do you know? Do you know his real name? No, I don't. Bob Smith. Bob Smith. Hey, Cornelius, I left that name a long time ago, man. And I says, <laughs> Oh, like... and it's okay. It's okay for you to tell the world what my name is. <laughs> right. You sound yeah. just like him. You say, yeah, you could you could you could have a yeah. side a side tour a side career here doing impressions. Yeah. Sure, I do. <laughs> why? Why did uh, Why did Rich leave in uh, seventy seven? Why did he leave? Ah, uh, he kind of had his fill of it. He, I think he thought he made enough money <laughs> because he wrote our biggest hit and uh, whatnot. Yeah. So I don't know. We we all had we all had different tastes and flavors to our writings, and uh, Kim Balladier, me, more rockier you know, than Sweet City Woman. But yeah. uh, it just uh, it just kind of fizzled. So he left. Kim and I uh, went as, as far as we could and so on to eventually Kim left. So I brought in my little brother from Calgary, Roy. Uh, rest his soul. He uh, played bass and uh, put him on bass and I played guitar and uh, tried to do a semblance of the, what the Stampeders were. But of course, People definitely realized that it was not the three man Sam Peters, even though we here's Sweet City Woman. <laughs> but they, they uh, well, tolerated us. <laughs> well, did you get did, did you get tired of playing that song, Sweet City Woman? Well, not really, you know, because because when you as soon as you play it, <laughs> right. people are nuts, you know. I had a at an occasion that uh, a couple of years ago, a good friend of mine promoted the uh, Cheech and Chong at the Jubilee Auditorium here in Calgary. And he says, hey, Ronnie, you want to come? And, you know, I said, sure, you know, I'll get you backstage at the green room too. And so, great, great. So I go in the green room, uh, long story short, uh, after their show, et cetera, right? And they got, uh, they've got about 30 people or so waiting for autographs. And apparently people paid $10, which totally went to charity. That ten dollars <laughs> went to charity for autographs or what have you, you know. So I walk in there and Cheech is singing, sweet, sweet Cheech. I said, Cheech, please, man, I can do that one backwards. <laughs> so he stopped. I said, No, no, I'm flattered that you know our song, man. Really, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I went and jammed with Tommy Chong over at the uh, blues bar over in Calgary. Yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, he's Canadian. Yeah, Tommy Chong's Canadian. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he's from Edmonton, Calgary. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, well, uh, one song from Platinum uh, I really like was Everybody. Did you write that one? No, Kim. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's, yep. Yeah. But then uh, you had to scramble to get a new lineup for uh, <laughs> Ballsy. I like that. <laughs> I like that title. You know? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that uh, that final track, if you really want to, mm -hmm. uh, that that goes into that Frank Marino for me. Frank Marino, oh, yeah. you know, kind of bluesy, great guitar work. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I wrote that one, and uh, it's well, 
Again, it was just a different style of writing. Okay, let's try this one. Here's a rockier one, and here's here's not. <laughs> yeah. It's a quieter one, yeah. So, uh, but it was you know all trying to rah 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 get your stuff going. Yeah. So, and if you really want to, you can. That's right. Well, that's the way to go out with a bang, not a whimper, right? Yeah, I'm on. <laughs> all right. So the had the band just run, run its course, you think, by that time? I. I think so, you know, it, uh, uh, you know, it, I guess say I brought little brother in and to uh, a drummer and uh, a guitarist and whatnot, and we tried to make a go of it, <laughs> excuse me, but here I am uh, flogging a dead horse, I think, you know, I'm begging with the management and so on, and saying, man, don't call it Stampeders anymore, maybe Ronnie King's Rock Stampede, how about that, or something similar, you know? But no, no, if a record company says you don't call it Stampeders, they're not interested in signing it. Oh, yeah, well, fuck you. <laughs> you can understand that, can't you? <laughs> you can edit that out. Sorry, but <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Well, you guys, you guys did reunite in 92, 1992. Yes. Um, and, then, and then released that uh, Sure Beats Working album. Great title. That's right. 98. Mm -hmm. How was it uh, playing together again after all that time? quite uh unique in that uh you know we had played with one or two other bands musicians this and that and uh, uh it was just nothing was i can't uh, even explain it but uh, the three of us definitely gelled we had a chemistry we had a you know we had the voice sounds that people know us for uh, Kim, our drummer, sang Carry Me, Wild Eyes, and some of his ballads, and Rich sang Sweet City Woman, and uh, Keep Me Running Wild, some of those, et cetera. I did playing in the band, then came the white man, and so on. So it, uh, you know, uh, we we made it a show again. And so people people remember. So that's so, so grand to hear, you know, and in Canada especially. But uh, about five years ago, we did a... a snowbirds tour what they call snowbirds here and then everybody goes down with the greyhound buses or this or that if they still exist and uh and you know they, they go down and do uh, florida uh texas and arizona uh, all for a week and so on else so a bunch of us entertainers uh we were able to be hired for this and uh, we went and spent a warm weather when it was freezing up here in calgary and in canada so so that's what we did and that's my story and i'm sticking to it sticking to it well you know i have the opposite uh experience it gets so hot here in the summer this uh, was a, this was many uh, probably gosh 10 15 years ago now that uh, we yeah. went went in um july i believe it was to vancouver just oh, yeah. to get away, you know, because the it, the weather's so nice, you know, up there, and uh, just it was it was nice. It was really that was. So I've been yeah. to I've been to Toronto two times and Vancouver once. I see. Yeah. 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 Well. Yeah. Um, well, go, ahead. go ahead. Well, I was going to say that end of the country and ours in Calgary here too. It's uh, higher up in altitude. Uh, Calgary is two thousand feet above sea level, so yeah. you get the mountain. Uh, altitude, as I say, in Banff, just an hour from here, it can be uh, zero and already is, you know. And up in Ca Calgary, it's a, it eventually warms up. Right now, we're having what we call an Indian summer, and yeah. uh, it's quite lovely out there. But right. we, we know what's coming. <laughs> we must, we must, we must have, we must be getting some of that down here because for the last couple of days today, it's just ideal. Oh, yes. it's, it's, in the, it's in the 70s it's in the 70s sure. so, so it's just ideal but then it's supposed to warm up again but uh -huh. uh, we're appreciating right. it for right now for what it is for right now uh -huh. right. Were you, how did you uh, you must have been pretty proud uh, of receiving the uh, Lifetime Achievement Award from SOCAN uh, what 2011 <laughs> yeah. yes yeah we're very proud of course anytime that you get an award like that or similar to getting gold records and uh, also similar to uh, getting a Juno award. Yeah. You know, in the mid seventies, uh, 
early 70s, actually. And, uh, and along with our friend Kathy Young, we had uh, <laughs> we had several other artists that we shared uh, uh, grabbing a, a Juno that night, and it was very very much appreciated. So anytime you get awards like that, uh, you just you know you somehow you, you, you can't say it endorses or, or proves that you did something, but in some ways it does. You know, it does uh, it, it does that you were appreciated. And that uh, the industry appreciates you, yeah, especially, yeah. yeah, you just, yeah, you racked up the awards for the for <laughs> Sweet City Woman. Yeah. Um, yeah, you really just stole the show there. <laughs> there <laughs> as you know. Wow. Nice to hear. Well, yeah, well, well, I did want to say uh, kudos on the, um, the extended, the new version of uh, Then Came the White Man that, uh -huh. uh, that you guys sent me to watch. Really well, well done. I like the the clips that are in there. You know the the photos that are that are put in there. It it Thanks. really goes well together. And then at the end, of course, the uh, the speech. You know. Yeah, the, Chief Dan George. It, it, yeah. it, it all kind of came together in that manner. I would I would have liked to seen in that production and uh, uh, Jeff Reed, a good friend. Uh, and he put together all the uh, visuals and uh, and the captions and all of it uh, in uh, uh, North Bay, Ontario. <laughs> and I would kind of direct him and say, well, you know, I'd like to have this and that. And I'd like to, like to end it with the Chief Dan George and someone else. And maybe eventually, uh, you know, trim the music right down to almost uh, none, nothing or what have you. Maybe eventually just let it go by itself. But it ended up being quite a long time <laughs> with yeah. the, yeah. you know, so I would have preferred to put some music on that. I still might, so. Oh, yeah, you can always go back and do that. But it was yeah. it was really nice reading those words, too. And I mean, it's, yes. just, it's just I love I love how, you know, forgiving he is, you know. And, yes. And, uh, so, and through you know what his whole uh, ethnic history has gone through, and to be that, to take that position, yeah. you know, it's really, really, you know, to be to be commended very much. So you know, I agree. And uh, a lot of prime. Go ahead. Well, he's the prime example of of why I wrote that song, and then you know he explains it in words and so et cetera, and that. And that I, that I may eat canned fish from your <laughs> in it. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, uh, uh, and then uh, the uh, the new uh, I mentioned to Kathy. Um, you guys have to go see that yes. the new Robert, Robert De Niro movie. Um, oh yes. Uh, when that comes out, uh, what did it's it's? I think it takes place in. Um, Oklahoma, I want to say in the uh -huh. 1920s, 1920s. Oh, yeah. Robert, but it, looks, it looks like that looks like uh, Academy Award material. I think I it's see. already, yeah, new uh -huh. movie. I've uh, seen the trailers on, on you know, TV. Yes, yes, yes. that's it. Fla Killers mm -hmm. of the Flower Moon, that's it, Killers of the Flower Moon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely want to go see that, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, you know, it's a uh, nice of you to recognize that back back when you did back in the 70s and it's still profound today you know the words are still still profound today thank you i rewrote uh, then came the white man a little bit and uh, had the ronnie king band play it you might have read uh, whatever and so uh i we, we just got to practice it a lot and uh, in the house gig that i had being you know so uh uh, thought we'd lay it down, you know, and uh, very glad we did because it is more powerful than the original version. It is. It is. You know, so really, it's it's a full sound, fuller sound almost, and it's yeah, it's really got that driving, yeah, you know, beat to it, and it's really, really well, well done. But that's mm, that's something I hope a, hope a lot of people get to watch that. Uh, they do, you know. Have you had any response? I Oh, I constantly get uh, several hundred people just racking up the likes and whatnot. But I, uh, but my uh, dream of uh, seeing it go viral 
on behalf of our indigenous friends and you know uh has yet to come to fruition perhaps you can you can make it go viral <laughs> okay. okay i will go i will go yeah, yeah. i will i will inject uh i'll inject some some of the covid uh virus into it and see if it goes viral <laughs> uh, yeah maybe oh, not no. that one <laughs> no maybe not maybe not. Mm. but uh yeah that's uh that would be really nice i mean everybody mm. needs to hear and see that and sure you know, really does. um we'll talk about uh uh, any upcoming shows or tours or we decided to uh let the rest of the year of 23 uh go uh because quite frankly we we kind of just try to hit uh different areas of canada mostly that's where we're known most uh about once every two years so having done bc uh Vancouver Island included, and then Western Canada, Alberta, Manitoba, Saskatchewan. Uh, you know, they, you, you think, okay, well, let's just sit it out until the spring uh, of 24. And then we're going to be starting an Ontario tour again. Of, okay. I don't know, 21, 25 dates or whatever it is. So yeah, we'll still continue to tour as <laughs> rock till we drop, you know. <laughs> <laughs> any any plans to come down this way, Texas way, or? Well, you know, oh, even though you guys don't like the competition, that uh, everything's bigger in Calgary. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can still lay claim to that one. Go ahead, <laughs> but uh, not so far. There wouldn't be. It just uh, like I say, we're mostly known in Canada and. Uh, you know, like VTO, like uh, and many of the other acts, yeah. we do better in Canada than we would in the States to try to pull off a tour. Unless you went along with, okay, well, you're part of a, you know, four or five uh, other acts, yeah. et cetera, into a festival or this or that, you know. Uh, but you, we, you we got, just, have, have you plus guys we're getting have, older. Did yeah, I tell you that? We're getting older. <laughs> no. Have, have you guys uh, thought or have in the past, did you do any of those uh, ocean liner uh, package tours? No, I, I know what you mean, but yeah. uh, no, but I, I'd like to tell you how they introduce us these days. Okay. Okay. You remember them from the seventies. Now here they are in their seventies. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There you go. I, I yeah. can't lay claim on that one. Just uh, one of the uh, the promoters wrote that. And, okay, well, go ahead. <laughs> I'm surprised so. more fans of uh, uh, your generation don't use that. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a good. That's a good. That's really nice. That's really for nice. sure. Mm -hmm. and, well, uh, anything else, Ronnie? Um, it's been really nice talking to you. Did you like to plug or talk about or anything? Not really, Greg. Uh, I think uh, you know the USA could see fit to send me more money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> right. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. But you know, no, I, I think uh, you know we've covered lots of uh, stuff. Until yeah. until next time we talk. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe next time we'll have the whole band. Uh, sitting in right, you know, that would be yeah. nice you know yeah, i can't yeah. i can't remember i know i reached out to somebody maybe it was rich mm -hmm. uh, which on the on the i think it was a stamp or maybe maybe you got it i don't know but it was on i think the the website for the stampeders oh yeah i sent an email i sent an email and never got a response mm. I, I don't know who read it but anyway anyway mm. um yeah. yeah but then thankfully kathy kathy and you're you know, uh, tight. So <laughs> that, yeah. was, that was a, that was that was a good uh, lead in. You know, segue. Right, right. Right on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, well I do appreciate it, uh, Ronnie. And uh, again, uh, best best to you and uh, you know, and all that you do and uh, continued success. And just like you said, keep keep trucking on, right? And that's what. Yeah, you're man. Doing. Yeah. You know? If you're a musician, you you got to get that out. You know, you got right. 
You've got to, it, to do that. You can't keep it I, inside. No, I have no. one I have one song that I wrote uh, recently, whatever. It's called I Can't Hold This Rock and Roll Inside of Me. There you go. There you go. <laughs> that that's exactly right. You know? Yeah, yeah. So if you're a musician, you gotta write, perform, you gotta you gotta right. get it. Because it's who you are, you know. That's so, right. There you go. All right. Well, uh, it's been a it's been a nice uh, trip, right? <laughs> for sure, for sure, Greg. It, I appreciate it, your time. Sure, it's not over yet either. So, uh -huh. Great. I appreciate it too, Ronnie. And we will be in touch. Um, I'll send you this uh, once I get it edited a little bit. Shouldn't be for sure. Bad. Well, except for my goofs. You know, I know. You know, but uh, please. Please give the Stampeders regards to all the good folks in Texas.